You know what I'm sick of? Header connectors. I have to leave space on my PCB for them, and they're big and expensive and have to be soldered, and I usually really don't need them. Half the time, I'm going to plug that thing in once or use it for test or configuration only, and then it sits there taking up space for the rest of my product's life and sometimes causes problems with my enclosure or board-to-board -board spacing. Man, it would be really nice if there was a simpler, cleaner, leaner solution for plugging something like a ribbon cable to my board without all that overhead. Guess what? It turns out there is. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is Ben Arden from Worth Electronics, and we're going to talk about RedFit, a slick connector solution that apparently plugs right into via holes on my PCB. Guys, this is super cool. Let's check it out. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about RedFit connectors from Worth Electronics. Hi, Ben. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Okay, Ben, we are here to talk about RedFit SCED connectors. And I have to admit, I don't know what a SCED connector is, so... Ben, get me started here. Sure, of course. A SCED connector is actually the contact, which is inside a red fit connector. So this connector is a solderless connection. It has the SCED contacts, which we'll talk about later, a pluggable solution to the board. And then, of course, this is an insulation displacement connector, and it does have multiple mating cycles. Okay, so solderless connectors. And one thing I personally like my connectors to be is conductive. So how do we accomplish that part? Of course. So this is the slide of the contact. It shows that the top half has that Y fork in it, allowing the ribbon cable to have insulation displacement on the top. Okay. And the bottom has a selective gold plating where it is creating that termination against the via with the spring effect. So it is vibration proof because it has the ability to flex inside the via. Okay, so it's pressing outward into my contact. All right. And how does this keep its retention? I know you went into this a little bit, but how do I know it's going to not vibrate loose or glitch up my signals or something like that? Of course. So the material keeps a consistent pressure on the sidewalls of the via all the way through connection. So it's a connection of the entire via inside the, the PCB board. Okay, got it. Now, when I'm plugging these in, what keeps me from missing the target a little bit and plugging in one of these the wrong way? That could be bad for my board. I mean, don't ask me. How I know this. Yes, yeah, so we do have plastic pegs that are on the interface of the bottom of the connector. Okay. And these plastic pegs are two different diameters. So it prevents the misalignment. So it does have polarization pegs. The material of the plastic housing is LCP. Some of the reasons we chose this material is because it is halogen free. It's also capable of withstanding the glow wire test for safety. There's also the fact that the plastic pegs do have some retention on them. So it has little barbs to hold the connector in place. Great. So I won't plug it in backward or miss it by one pin or anything like that. So, Ben, we're all engineers here. Let's look under the hood a little bit. How do you get the wire connected to the connector? Sure. So if you're familiarized with the IDC, insulation displacement. So you're cutting through the insulation material of the wire. And so no stripping is necessary. It's a very gas tight seal, which means that no oxidation is occurring between the contact and the conductor of the cable. And then we have the sked side of it. So the bottom half of the connector, which of course applies that pressure to the via, allowing very high performance reliability and then low contact resistance. So I noticed no mating partner. So it seems like this is doing the job I usually accomplish by putting a header connector on my board. Does this let me do away with that completely? 
Correct. There's multiple examples, and one is the pin header. And so the pin header, of course, is necessary because of programming the board, connecting with the IC, and so on. You can see that this is a single connector. So it does help in the design because it will prevent you from purchasing additional part components, as well as keeps the weight of the board reduced. So if you're using this in place of two other connectors, it is ideal for that purpose. There's no electrical interference between the mating of the two connectors. So you have less resistance, which means higher performance and signal integrity. It can be plugged by hand, as you can see. So I don't have to pick and place pin headers. Correct. And I don't have a special tool to plug and unplug these. I can just jam them in there? Right, by hand. Great. Now, I have seen various kinds of press fit connectors before, but how is SCED different? Yes, so you probably have seen some of our products, including the square pins. There are other press fit technologies in the market, and what we've been trying to stay away from was damaging the VIA in any way. So this is a signal connector, and what we'd like to do is allow the signal to transfer properly without deforming the VIA. Yeah, that first example has a square pin in a round hole. Uh, I've been told that's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, well, it actually is very effective when you talk about power transfer, but in this case, we want to be as gentle as possible with the signal. Okay, so speaking of those holes, let's talk about the PCB side of things. What do I need to do on my board in order to accommodate these connectors? Yes, so this layout is very simplistic. There are multiple holes drilled, and of course, the signal connection vias need to be plated, but the other holes are just through holes, and the tolerances are not unrealistic for a manufacturer of a PCB board to design. So we do specify all of the tolerances and plating that's necessary for the proper installation of this product. Yeah, this looks like something that pretty much any of the manufacturing houses we've used could easily handle. I believe it will be. All right, can you give me an overview of the electrical characteristics? Now, I assume these are suitable for most of the normal signals I would have on a PCB. Yes. So when you do look at our data sheets for this product, you'll see some of the technical characteristics laid out for you. It is made of a material that is commonly used in connectors. It also has your gold and your copper to have the best signal integrity. And then it is a common pitch of 2.54. So although it is staggered, it's a very practical pitch, probably one of the most common. The ribbon cable does accept very slim, minimalistic ribbon cable that is used for a variety of other applications. So it's not a ribbon cable that is difficult to come by. Some of the electrical ratings, as you see, it's really strictly designed for signal integrity and it has a very low resistance to keep it very strong. Okay, cool. And I don't see anything on the slide about this, but how many times can I safely plug and unplug one of these? Oh, very good question. So if you're talking about a permanent solution, keeping it on the board, shipping it off to the next process of enclosing your board, then we suggest something around 10 cycles. If you're looking to use it as more of a temporary solution, then we can go up to 25. Okay, got it. That's plenty for the kinds of applications I normally do. And one more thing it doesn't say on this slide, and I'm just curious... What does SCED mean? I mean, it sounds a little bit like an IKEA product or something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so from the research I've done, the Swedish translation to this is it's done. So take that as you will, but it's done. This is a very... I plugged it in and it works. <laughs> exactly. Got it. Okay. And what kind of applications are you seeing these used in? Permanent and temporary. So... With the permanent solution, we see it in signal transfer. So whether it's your pin header or box header, we see it transferring the signal from your board to another board or your board to another application in some other location. So the temporary also is used for programming and debugging. So it's a very secure feature to use because it's tamper-proof as well. No one can actually communicate with the board without having this type of link. Cool. Okay, so it seems like any place I would normally put a ribbon cable between two boards or whatever, this would come into play. Now, what are some permanent applications? 
Yes. So the permanent applications are, as I mentioned, between the board and other products. So whether you're tying into a keyboard or something with signal, so camera, microphone, so be it. Okay, cool. And what else does RedFit SCED connectors do for me? What they do is they minimize cable length, which of course will lead to improvement in signal transfer. The loss is not as great because of the length of the cable. So as you see, we can take the difficulty of installing a standard ribbon cable onto a board and compress it so that when you need to create the build, you don't need as much available space. Okay, cool. I could see how this could make it fitting into my enclosure easier as well. Now, this also seems like it could be useful for temporary or debugging stuff as well. Yes, and we do put the fact that it could be in any industry, and the reason is because it's not on the board when it goes beyond the programming of the board itself, the IC. So it can be used to communicate with the board and then removed, and the board can go on its way into any application, so automotive, anything such as that. So I could use one of these for provisioning and test, and then it would come off, and then in the actual field installation, it's not in the design, so it doesn't have to be automotive certified, for example. Correct. Yes, it's very broadly applicable. Great. So I'm definitely going to be using these in board designs moving forward. Now, Ben, can you give me a quick recap of what we've discussed? Yes. So this RedFit SCED connector is very ideal connector for multiple mating cycles, pluggable application, less components necessary. It's also made of the correct material with the gold plating on the contacts and the plastic being manufactured so that it's within specifications of safety regulations and so on. You know, we spoke about the common applications being for programming, debugging, or of your choice of a permanent solution. So the RedFit IDC SCED is one of the new technologies in which we plan to incorporate the SCED contact into other designs in the future. So look forward to this very useful, very precise type of connection. Very cool. I will be watching for that. Okay, so I'm going to click that link and check out some more resources you guys have available on Mauser.com. But I think that's all I have time for today. So thank you so much for joining me, Ben. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Great. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can check out a Mauser.com page all about RedFit IDC SCED connectors from Worth Electronics. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.